<clears throat> okay, will you open up your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 44? <clears throat> And we're going to start reading from verse 15 to 28. Verse 15 to 28. And uh, keep in mind, uh, it goes along with the study in Revelation. Uh, when I read this, you'll see how the external church, those that are not saved, uh, are not going to hear what Jeremiah has to say. And they're going to go after their own false gods and their false gospels. So I'm going to start with uh, Jeremiah 44, uh, chapter 44, verse 15. Uh, before we start, uh, let's bow in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for your holy word that speaks to our heart. We thank you for those listening, Father. May we uh, grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit gives the increase and uh, teaches us the deep things of God as we look into your holy word. We thank you for saving us from the lake of fire, washing our sins in the blood of our Lord Jesus. Many are called, few are chosen. Thank you for all those names that are written in the book, book of life before the foundation of the world. We give you praise and honor, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Okay, verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals and were, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, the incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as this day, because ye have burned incense and because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, ye, ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, we will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. <clears throat> ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah, that dwell in the land of Egypt. 
Behold, I have sworn by my great name, said the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah all the, in all the land of Egypt, saying, the Lord God liveth. <clears throat> Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah and all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. Okay, <clears throat> we just read to verse 28. Um, turn over to Revelation now, and we're going to continue our study. Uh, we're in chapter 3. We didn't quite uh, <clears throat> finish verse 8. <clears throat> and if you remember um, uh, last week, uh, we looked at some of this language. I know thy works, <clears throat> and uh, I have set before thee an open door. No man can shut it, for thou has a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Now, uh, as we've been working through these seven churches, this is the church in Philadelphia, and uh, uh, this would be the sixth church. And uh, we'll be coming up to the seventh church of the, La the church of Laodiceans in verse 14. But um, if you remember some of these churches um uh, the uh, the first five churches um the lord says they left their first love and uh they've gone after the doctrines of uh nicolaitans and the uh the doctrines of balaam and the teachings of jezebel and they didn't there was not much good uh language there about these churches but here in philadelphia it's it's pointed more to those that are saved in the external church, because he says uh, some of this language that uh, that was a little strength that was kept my word and is not denied my name. See, and um, whereas the other churches, uh, he says uh, that Satan's seat is there, and uh, and um, and that they. Um, are uh, hold to the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which God hates, which would be false doctrines. But you don't have this language here uh, with the Philadelphia church. So you could uh, uh, see that it's pointing more to those that are the elect that are holding to the, uh, the gospel of Christ in this Philadelphia church or in the external church, say. Because these seven churches point to the the uh, um, the external church, and yet there's some that are uh, God's elect. That's why He says, "I have a few." Remember in chapter three, and He says, um, uh, "Look at verse four: Thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with Me in white, for they are worthy." So of course. Those few are the ones that are saved in, in Sardis, where most of them uh, uh, have fallen away, see? And the, and the church is dead, according to verse 1. And yet um, uh, there's those that um, are hold to the truth. Now, I said, um, how did they come to know the truth? Well, of course, God has to open up our heart and minds and, and as we read our Bibles, as we listen to uh, perhaps somebody that's bringing the truth and the Lord uh, uh, opens up their understanding and, and, these thing, and you start seeing these things clear in the Bible. And, and uh, yet um, uh, that person there uh, is saved and, and is not following the doctrines of 
the Nicolaitans or the, the doctrines the, the churches are holding to that are not sound doctrines, see? And so uh, God does these things during these times that he brings his sheep into the, into this under the sound of the true gospel, see? And God works in their hearts to see these things. And this is, um, this is how we become uh, born of God and, and, to, and, to, and enter into God's kingdom. So going back to uh, chapter three, he says, I've set before thee an open door. And we see that uh, Christ opens our heart. He opens our understanding, our eyes, our ears. Um, he opens a door when we bring the, the true gospel. It says the door is open. Remember, Jesus is the door. Uh, and John chapter 10, verse nine, he says, I am the door and no man can shut it. So when the door, when you're bringing the, the true gospel, it says the doors open and God could bring his elect um, into a, um, that door into the kingdom as the true gospels goes forth. And no man can shut it for thou has a little strength and has kept my word. Now that word um, kept in the Greek, it means to watch, to guard, uh, keeping the eye upon. And I just want to show you uh, how it's used. Go to John 14, verse 23. <clears throat> John 14, and then verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep. That's the word, kept. He would keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And that Greek word abode, it means staying or residence. He will make our, his residence with that person that keeps the word with us, see? And so um, we keep the word of God in our hearts um look at uh john 15 look at 9 through 11. john 15 9 through 11. as the father have loved me so have i loved you continue in my love if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love, see? So we keep the word of God. We keep the sayings of Christ. Uh, we, keep, uh, we keep the faith, see? And so um, let's look at one more in the book of Jude, right before Revelation. Look at Jude. Look at verse um, 21. That word keep is the same word kept over there in Revelation 3, uh, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Okay. And so um, uh, we see that uh, believers keep the word. And, um, and so back in, in Revelation, uh, three, where it says, um, uh, has kept my word and has not denied my name, see? And so the name of the Lord uh, is to be uh, exalted. And, and this word denied, uh, the Greek meaning for this word denied means uh, contradict or reject. So thou has not contradicted my name, thou has not rejected my name. And so uh, the name of the Lord uh, uh, is exalted. Look at Acts chapter four. Look at verse um, 10 through 12. Acts chapter four, 10 through 12. <clears throat> 
Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by my, by, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. See, by the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. See, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is salvation. And so um, you here in Revelation, thou hast not denied my name. See, um, I want to go also to Ephesians chapter one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Look at verse uh, 20 and 21. <clears throat> Ephesians 1, 20 and 21. <clears throat> Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. See, the name of Christ, every name that is named, far above every name that is named. So uh, the name, the Lord Jesus Christ is salvation. And yet during these times of great tribulation, uh, You'd be surprised uh, some of these ministers, uh, if you if you uh, happen to listen, which uh, uh, sometimes I, I wonder uh, some about uh, if they're going to even mention the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't even hear them uh, say the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, and so it's really something how all this is being fulfilled. Uh, if you remember in Isaiah, or excuse me, Jeremiah, go back to Jeremiah 44. <clears throat> if, you, if you caught that verse that I read, it says he was, he's going to take his name right out of their mouth. Those that had a false gospel and uh, weren't preaching the truth. Look at Jeremiah 44 and verse 26. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah, that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, said the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying the Lord God liveth. See, So <clears throat> God takes his name out of the mouth of these false prophets and uh, uh, as it says right there, my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt. Because you remember, they were going to they were going to uh, offer sacrifices to the queen of, uh, as it says, the was it say the queen of heaven uh, in verse seventeen there, and and of course it's false gods, false gospels, and. Uh, you find these ministers today that are that are going after false gospels. Uh, you don't hear the Lord Jesus Christ out of their mouth. And so um, it's something how the Lord will do these things to those that are not obeying the truth and going after. Um, they're not holding to the true gospel. They're going after false gods and false gospels, say. And remember, these people um, won't listen. See, look at uh, and forty. If you're still in Jeremiah forty-four, look at verse sixteen. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. See, they're not going to pay attention to what Jeremiah has to say. Uh, they're going to continue uh, offering their. Uh, there's their incense 
unto the queen of heaven and pour out their drink offerings, see? And so you can see how the Lord will take his name out of their mouth because they're false prophets, see? And so um, uh, I want us to go to um, uh, Luke chapter 12 right now. Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> Look at verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men, shall be denied before the angels of God. Uh, remember, he says to the Philadelphia church, "Thou, this is the contra uh, contrast. Uh, if you, He says, thou has not denied my name. And this is the same word over there in verse 9. He that denieth me, uh, these are people that, do, that will deny the Lord. He that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God, see? And so um, uh, the, the, those that are saved uh, will not deny or reject. Remember that word denied means to contradict or reject, see? And so uh, we have pictures and types uh, throughout the Bible that um, uh, that that teaches us uh, spiritual things, say, spiritual things. Now, um, uh, I want us to go over, uh, take a moment, to go over to Genesis. Go to Genesis 18. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 18. <clears throat> If, you, if you're familiar with this chapter, the Lord appeared before Abraham in, in verse 1. And then it says, behold, uh, uh, in verse 2, three men stood by him. And, and we could see a picture of the Godhead there. Uh, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them um, and from the tent of the door and bowed himself toward the ground. Remember in Genesis 1, it says... Uh, um, it says, let us make man in our, our image, let us, uh, so God, the Godhead is, is all through the Bible, let us, and, and here three men would, would picture Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, um, and as you notice, um, uh, Abraham in verse four, let a little water, I pray, you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And, and notice in verse five, at the end of verse five, it says, and they said, so do as thou hast said, see? But I'm bringing this out because the Lord, um, uh, the, the Lord is going, uh, Abraham is going to uh, continue speaking to the Lord about Sodom. And, um, uh, look at uh, verse tw uh, 23, chapter 18, verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also des destroy and spare the place for the, and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? And that be far uh, from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, uh, that would be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Uh, and then in 26, and the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare the, all the place for their sakes. Now keep in mind, it's a picture, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zaboam is a picture of the external church. And yet, you, we're going to see that only a few made it out of there. 
Lot and his two daughters, but Abraham knew that Lot was in Sodom, and uh, and he's and he's uh, having a uh, conversation here with the Lord. So he he starts off, if there be fifty righteous, and will will thou spare the place for their sakes, and uh, and then um, uh, then if you go down to verse twenty eight. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy the, the city for the lack of five? And if I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. Then he goes to forty in verse twenty nine, and and the Lord says, I will not do it for forty sake. And then in verse thirty, he goes down to thirty. Uh, Peradventure there shall thirty be found there, and he said, I will not do it if i find 30 there and then abraham says if there be 20 and 31 uh, and he said behold now i have taken upon me to speak unto the lord peradventure there should be 20 found there and he said i will not destroy it for the 26 and remember these 50 righteous or 45 or 40 or 30 or 20 or 10 these would be pictures of god's elect or anybody uh, uh, that's righteous uh, uh, would have would be those that are saved. And he says, I will not destroy it for 20. Then he goes down to and 32 and he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet for this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he says, I will not destroy it for the 10 sake. And the Lord went his way, say. And so now, if you uh, go to Genesis 19, he's saying he's not going to destroy Sodom and for 10. There wasn't even 10 people saved in Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboam. And, and, uh, and all those four cities, there, there weren't even 10 righteous. And, uh, and the Lord went in to get Lot. But what I want to read to you is uh, in chapter 19, uh, the men of Sodom uh, uh, compassed the house uh, in verse four, before they lay down, the men of Sodom, Sodom um, even the men of Sodom compassed the house round both uh, young and old, old and young, and all the people from every quarter. And so you see these surrounded Lot's house and, uh, they wanted to, um, uh, they're acting wickedly as, it, as uh, in verse seven, Lot went out and said, I pray you brethren, do not so wickedly. But notice in six, Lot went out at the door, on, out at the door and shut the door after him, see? And remember uh, the door, uh, when the door shut, it's because those people there are lost they're in they're uh they're following other gospel false gospels and to them the door is shut see uh and so go down to verse 10 now but the men which would be those two angels a picture of god the men put forth their hand and pull lot into the house to them and shut to the door and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they worried themselves to find the door. And we know that Christ is the door. And when you have another gospel, you're blinded. You can't find the door. You can't enter into Christ, into eternal life. You can't enter through the door. What, you're a thief and a robber, the Bible says in John 10. And so these people were spiritually blinded. And that's why there wasn't even 10 righteous in that city of Sodom. And, and of course, uh, the Lord um, uh, went in to get Sodom. Uh, and, and so um, look at verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, has thou here any besides son-in-law, thy sons, thy daughters, whatsoever thou has in the city, bring them out of this place. 
for we will destroy this place because the cry uh, of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord had sent us to destroy it. See, and so um, uh, this is this is the the um, this is the language of here in Genesis 19, where God will go in and get His elect out of Sodom or out of the external church. Look at verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth that he said escape for thy life this would be the angels or god himself telling him telling lot escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed and a mountain would be a picture of the lord jesus christ or the kingdom of god and this is what we do when during the time of great tribulation that we escape to Christ, we escape during the time when uh, everybody is going after false gospels like the people of Sodom. See, now uh, keep that in mind. Go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Look at Jeremiah 23. Uh, I want to read one and two. And then I'm going to read verse uh, 14. <clears throat> One in uh, Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. See? And so God has given us insight that during the great tribulation, the pastors and ministers in the churches that are going after uh, false gospels or the doctrines of demons or Nicolaitans that we're reading in Revelation, uh, they're leading, uh, the, as it says here, um, they scatter the sheep of my pasture, see, and uh, look at verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah, see. And so you see Sodom and Gomorrah is a picture of those that have gone astray and have gone after false doctrine, false gods, see? And so um, I want to show you something else. Go to Jude, just before the revelation there. Go to Jude. Look at verse um, 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. So the cities about them would be Adma and Zeboam. So you have the four cities there, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboam. So the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh which would be false gospels see because remember jesus says he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has everlasting eternal life everlasting life and if it's strange flesh it would be a false gospel see and this going after strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And you see, this is the condition of the, uh, the great tribulation, the nature during the time of the end where uh, Sodom and Gomorrah are pictures and types of the churches and they're going after strange flesh. And I wanna to go to uh, finish it off by going to Luke 17. Look at Luke 17. Look at verse um, 
start with verse 26. Uh, I'll start with verse 25. Remember that word denied in the Greek, it means rejected, contradict or rejected. And uh, there's, there's, there's going to be many that are going to deny the Lord's name or reject his name. And look what it says here in Luke 17, 25. But first must, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, a little bit, I mentioned last week that Noah was a preacher of righteousness and nobody listened to him. And there was only eight that were saved during that time. But to get the spiritual understanding in verse 27, they were eating and drinking false gods, marrying false gods. Uh, the Bible teaches these things, see? They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, the flood came and destroyed them all. So hidden in here in, in days of Noah is a picture of the great tribulation, what to expect near the end of time. Now look at verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank. Well, they are the, the ones of Sodom and Gomorrah. They did eat and drink false gospels. They went after strange flesh, see? They bought, they sold false gospels. They planted and they built upon their false gospels. They weren't saved. Remember, Abraham says, if there are 10 righteous, will you destroy the city? And he says, I wouldn't for the 10. There wasn't even 10 saved in those four cities. See, there was only eight saved on the ark and, and everybody outside the ark perished. And here in Sodom, Gomorrah, four cities and only three made it out was Lot and his two daughters. And so, uh, as it says here in verse 28, likewise also, it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. And the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all, see? And so, you have hidden in this is a picture of the great tribulation because uh, it says, in verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. See, whatever went on in the days of Noah and the days of Lot will be similar to when Christ comes. See, and what went on there? They, they didn't listen to uh, uh, Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness. Uh, they held to their false gospels. Then even Lot. He told them up out of this place and they didn't listen to him. And, uh, um, and, and they went after false gospels, see? And, and um, this is a, a picture of uh, what to expect in the churches as Satan is, it takes his seat in the churches, see? During the time of the end, when, uh, when we know that at the end of the great tribulation, the Lord Jesus will return. And, uh, and so he says these things, in ver and then again in verse 30, even thus shall it be when the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So uh, God gives us spiritual understanding of what took place in the days of Noah and the days of Lot to give us insight into the great tribulation. If you see that, see, and, and that's why I said, when, when he says they did eat, they drank, you know, why do we have to know that? He's not talking about they ate physically or they drank physically. Uh, it's spiritual language. They're eating and drinking false gospels, see? They buy and they sell um, false gospels, like it says in Revelation 13, that those that had the mark of the beast, they're the ones that buy and sell. 
And here in, in verse 28, it says they bought and they sold, see? What are they buying and selling? False gospels. They're trained uh, to push their false gospels on other people. And this is why the ministers that are caught up in these false gospels are, are, are trying to sell their false gospels to the people that are there. And if they buy into it, they're going to end up like those outside of the ark or those that are uh, that perished. Uh, when God rained fire uh, and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all, see? And remember, those people were blinded. They couldn't find the door, okay? And that's Christ. And so um, uh, since I'm on this, I want I want uh, I want to share something with you. Go to Matthew chapter 12. You know, we live in a wicked world and we hear things. It seems like, uh, you know, daily or whatever, but, uh, and, and, and we, and we think what's going on? Well, the Bibles will tell us what's going on. Uh, if you go to Matthew chapter 12, uh, look at verse 43 through 45 there. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Of course, that unclean spirit is Satan. And he walketh through dry places, which means a, a man that is not saved. Dry places is somebody that's not saved. When a person becomes saved, Jesus says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But here, it's a dry place. Satan can enter into people that are not saved, see? He walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return unto my house, which is that man, that inward dwelling, from whence I came out. And when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. That person has not the Holy Spirit in them, he's not saved. Then he go, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And so what, I'm, what it's teaching here is the last state uh, of this last generation before the end of time will be more wicked than the first because this word seven other spirits would be the complete perfection of satan's wickedness that's why it says seven other spirits more wicked than himself so i'm not surprised when i hear these things on the the news that happens it's satan working in that person it's the seven other spirits more wicked. And of course, they, they try to attribute it to mental illness or some other thing, which the Bible says right here, it's Satan's wickedness during the time of the end, see, uh, to do such things, wicked things that people do to themselves. It's because Satan is in them. They're, they're a dry place. And, and the Lord says, uh, he brings seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, see? And so this is why there's such wickedness going on, because uh, Satan is loosed. And during the end, it says the, the, right there, the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the, the nature of man is more wicked as we near the end of time than the first state, see, because Satan is loosed. And now, and it says it's real clear that even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. The last generation will be more wicked because it's seven other spirits more wicked than himself. The complete perfection of Satan's wickedness in mankind. And that's what you have going on today, that Satan is going through dry places 
and and doing such wicked things and and it's the, it's satan's work his wickedness that the bible says that will happen okay and so this is the, this is what uh, we're living in these times see and so we that are saved uh, the bible says uh to flee to the mountains flee to christ during these times okay so let's go back to revelation uh chapter three revelation chapter three and look at look at uh uh look at verse um nine <clears throat> it says um behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan which say there are jews and are not but do lie behold i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that i have loved thee see and so um what is that teaching uh what is this teaching here behold i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and remember uh what he says i will make them of the synagogue that word uh synagogue uh, it means assembly of people a meeting place a congregation the churches say the synagogue of satan this language was also uh got, uh brought out in verse nine um look at uh chapter two verse nine i know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and i know the blasphemy of them which say they are jews and are not but are the synagogue of satan now if you do a study on on um, uh, why does he say which say they are jews remember we look for the spiritual teaching see and just flip over to romans chapter two and god gives us the definition of one that's a jew look at chapter two of romans um look at verse 28 and 29 romans 2 for he is not a jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god so spiritually we're jews because we have been circumcised uh, of the heart by the spirit of god like it says in ezekiel so spiritually we're jews we're christians we're jews and and uh and when jesus died they wrote a uh they wrote um jesus king of nazareth king of the jews see and he's king of those that are have been circumcised uh that of the heart that means every one of us that has been born of god spiritually is it would be a jew spiritually speaking so when it says in revelation that uh back in chapter 3 verse 9 behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan uh which say they are jews and are not but do lie they're 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 saying that they're believers they're saying that they're uh christians if you will say children of god and they're of the synagogue of satan say and and uh, it says right there they're not that they're say they're jews and are not but do lie so they're saying that they're believers but they're not they're lying and they have another gospel see and he's saying behold i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that i have loved thee see so uh, i want us to look at some of this language what does it mean i will come uh and i will make them to come and worship before thy feet go to romans chapter 16 uh look at uh look at verse 17 through 20 there romans 16. Seventeen through twenty. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. See? And, and remember that those churches, those five churches that we looked at in Revelation, they're going after doctrine of Balaam, Nicolaitans, the teachings of Jezebel. Spiritually, they're false doctrines. And here, here the Bible the Bible's saying, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But I, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Okay. And so um, here it says he'll bruise Satan under your feet. Now, this word bruise, um, it means to crush completely to shatter okay and and uh um this is what satan does to those that are not saved see he he um uh if you go to luke chapter 9 go to luke chapter 9 look at verse uh, 38 through 42 Luke chapter 9, look at 38. <clears throat> and behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, which would be uh, the devil here. Uh, uh, lo, a spirit taketh him. And he suddenly crieth out, and it, it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And that word bruising is the same word uh, that we read in, in Romans 16, verse 20. It means to crush completely, to shatter. And so you can see what Satan does. He'll, he'll uh, crush a person completely. He'll bruise him uh, and shatter his life, whether it's through uh, drugs or alcohol or uh, uh, whatever they do, suicide. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll enter somebody, like I said, he goes through dry places and he'll shatter that person's life completely. Um, as it says here, that word means to crush completely. This is the nature of Satan. He wants to take your life if he can, because he knows he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. So if he can take somebody's life, he's going to do that. So that person there will end up in hell with Satan. See, uh, remember, Satan is a spirit and, uh, and he'll be cast into the lake of fire, the Bible says in Revelation. And so uh, when somebody's under the pow Satan's power, that person uh, uh, teareth him, and he bruises him, and and uh, hardly depart hardly departeth from him. And then verse forty, and I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered <coughs> and said, "O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither." And he's as he was yet coming. The devil, that's the same uh, as it says in verse 39, lo, a spirit taketh him. Now God's saying it was, it's the devil, and he was yet coming. Uh, the devil threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Only the Lord Jesus can, can uh, cast out or rebuke that devil see 
and we're no longer in in satan's dominion we're no longer dry now we have the water of the gospel the holy spirit in us and satan can never enter a child of god okay he can never enter a child of god the holy spirit is in us god is in us both to will and do of his good pleasure and so um um, remember that Satan can never enter in, into a child of God, someone that has been saved. And the Holy Spirit, uh, remember I read you John 14, Jesus says, my father and I will come and make our abode, our residence with you. And uh, um, God does a, a, a good job when he casts out the devil, that, that, that devil never comes back into that person again because that person now is saved and and uh, now god lives and resides in that person okay it's comforting to know that when god's in us uh that evil uh satan or that devil cannot enter into a child of god that's why we know uh, judas wasn't saved because it says satan entered into judas say he wasn't he wasn't born again and so um it's comforting to know that uh god is in us and um and so um i want to finish by reading uh, a verse and we'll have to pick it up um uh next time lord willing and finish uh, uh some of the language in verse nine but um i want us to finish by going to uh philippians go to philippians um chapter one i want to read uh chapter one i want to read verse six being confident of this very thing that he which begun hath begun a good work in you will perform it or that greek word means finish to complete will finish to complete it will perform it until the day of jesus christ see christ that's done a good work in us and then uh go over flip over to chapter 2 and look at verse uh 13 um uh 12 and 13 and that should do it i'm going to read chapter 2 12 and 13. wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed, not as not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. See? God is in us. Praise the Lord that we are saved. So Lord willing, next week we'll pick it up in, in verse 9.